Okay. All right, recording now. Okay, so for me, like the mother is such a, a strong bond. You know, it's it's the it's um, the infant. You know, the the mother gives birth to the child, and that bond of um, of wanting love and protection and care from the mother. I mean, different people have different experiences with their mothers. I would say that's karmically related as to what mother you get when you're incarnated into this world. But, um, you know, it is this very, very strong bond, whether the mother is loving or abandoning or whatever the, the messages are that come through the mother. Now, if the relationship with the mother is, son, you know, suddenly the mother cuts the child off and you're an adult, well, what it's going to do is, is going to bring up all the attachments you have, all the baggage, all the associations that you have with the mother. And it can be very traumatizing if suddenly a mother seems to cut you off for, for uh, whatever reason. Now, if it's bringing up a lot of feelings or a lot of trauma or, or you know, overwhelm or whatever it is, then for me, when, when you're feeling a huge amount of feelings or trauma or something, if a parent cuts you off for whatever reason, or is angry with you or whatever, then um, whenever you feel an extreme amount of feelings or overwhelm, it's like the universe or your consciousness is sort of saying to you, here is something that you really need to look at. And if you try and avoid not looking at it, then it will get worse, you know, and, and possibly if you keep avoiding it, you could have a breakdown, a mental, Mental or physical breakdowns or spiritual breakdowns are just like the an emergency saying, "Look, we're going to stop you if you're not going to look at it and process it." You know, the universe is going to stop you and force you to process it and take strip everything else in your life away from you, so that that's the only thing you can work on. I mean, I had that when I had kidney failure. It's like I've got to work on my spirituality now. I can't keep working my job. It was like everything is taken away because I was refusing to look at my, you know, my spiritual bankruptcy while working in the stock market. So if something like this comes up, you know, and the projections are usually that some person, place or situation outside of you is the source of love and care and protection that one projects outside, especially, I mean, it's understandable with, with a parental figure. So if that happens, if there's strong feelings, then it means a lot of spiritual work is required. Um, and uh, because if you don't do the spiritual work to release it, you know, feel the feelings out, cancel any beliefs, or process it through whatever spiritual mechanism you're currently using, then it's like baggage, which is just sitting there uh, in the background. And we just, um, we know from muscle testing kinesiology that whenever you're holding any negativity, any fear, any repressed guilt, and especially when you're experiencing that or having thoughts around fear, guilt, shame, abandonment, whatever it is, that all your energy lines, your meridians in the body start getting cut off. Like, you know, if you had, um, uh, I had fear, you know, I had fear while I was working in the stock market. So, you know, I blew my kidneys out. The fear meridian, the energy to the, the kidney meridian bl uh, blows out. If you're, um, stressing yourself out you might you know you might just cut off another meridian and start to feel exhausted or overwhelmed so as you cut off these uh, as you indulge in have these uh, repressed emotions and feel these emotions and have angry thoughts or shameful thoughts or unloving thoughts or attack thoughts then different meridians get blocked off and the body starts to either get exhausted or organs start to fail or you, you get a breakdown so it's important to find out what the block is and to clear it. Uh, and often if it's a big thing, it's going to take, in my view, spiritual work. It's, it's not going to be like a, a magic wand and say, this is all gone now and I'm going to be happy, joyous and free. Because um, if it was, then, you know, you just need to just, um, you wouldn't really need a spiritual books or approaches. As everyone would just be happy all the time. I think that's called heaven. Okay, so... If you are suffering, you know, the, um, if like a major love figure for you that you're attached to sort of cuts you off, I would use that as, a, as an opportunity for transcending, you know, you know, like praying for the other one is probably going to create healing, praying for miracles to see it differently, 
sitting with feelings, going to the observer of anything that's coming up for you, taking whatever you, time you need. You know, when I had kidney failure, there was extreme exhaustion. I mean, obviously, when you've got kidney failure, what, you know, your kidneys are failing, you're going to be exhausted and have brain fog. But actually, that brain fog and exhaustion or trauma, you know, whatever it is, it was a trauma, actually, losing your kidneys. Um, you know, if you sit, I, I, you know, I realized that this is going to take heavy processing. It took about five or seven years of heavy uh, daily spiritual work, regimented spiritual work, because I knew I had the tools that I got from Dr. Hawkins to sit with feelings and that if I felt all these feelings of exhaustion, you know, trauma, whatever, feel them all out, then I'll get to that, you know, these are just the blocks that which are blocking me from experiencing endless energy and vitality. And all that negativity I had around my past, my attachments to my past career, my attachments to my body, as I just released all of that and just surrendered that to God and uh, surrendered all the fears and resentments around health, then, you know, miracle after miracle after miracle happened around health. So whenever these big blocks, I would say like, I mean, it's just normal for addicts to want a quick solution to uh, letting go, but actually, if there's a lot of repressed belief systems and re repressed emotions, um, you know, having an approach and having a daily discipline to release that stuff does, you know, one of the greatest things I heard one of my spiritual teacher, Dr. Hawkins, say is actually all of this stuff is finite. You know, there is an end and it does get easier as you start releasing your repressed fear, shame and guilt. And as you start releasing all the limiting beliefs you hold in mind. Uh, so, you know, I, I believe I can't have a happy life or I believe my ha I can't, I'm not entitled to miracles with my health, whatever it is, as you release them. But while these belief systems are still there, while you're still allowing these limiting beliefs or your karma to run your life, they'll still operate in the background, whether you, you work and releasing them or not. So the other thing to know with spiritual work and why a lot of spiritual practices say daily spiritual work is because... Um, you know, the world is programming you and um, as you release uh, work on spiritual stuff, it then you become aware of other more subtle stuff that you need to release. And if you stop, um, you stop trying to clear out uh, the ego in this world. I mean, there is a tendency for the ego to, to take on stuff if you're not constantly sort of protecting yourself and your spiritual presence and purity. Because, you know, the world is just full of messages from everyone you speak to, from every TV, every advert you watch. Okay, so I will stop there. Uh, press.